Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Dueling Book Dual Commentary. This time I'm going to be playing with Gokis. Uh, this is a deck that I have never, ever explored on the channel because it never really had a win condition until we got the Nightmare cards. Uh, essentially, all the Goki cards are cards that I've been huge fans of, specifically because they could search rematch. Like, all the main deck monsters that float, like, their effects are not really the best in terms of what they do, except for Suprex. Suprex is by far the best card in the main deck. Uh, and like Twist Cobra lets you out Masterpiece, which is cool, but otherwise the deck didn't really have that many things that you could do with the cards because the Link Monsters you were going into weren't that amazing. Now that all changed with Isold in Extreme Force, and it's only gotten better to the point where the deck now actually has a win condition in the form of the Nightmares being released. Because now you can go into Extra Link combos, you can do Trigate Wizard, Firewall, and Griffin plays, all that sort of stuff. Now I've been looking at some lists online, been playing around with stuff, playing around with ratios, playing around with things that I might try, like an Armageddon Knight uh, Destiny Hero Malicious package. Um, there's multiple things that I've tried out. Uh, and this side deck is just, you know, as generic as I think it could be. Red Reboot is, like, one of my favorite cards, because going second against Trap Decks is fantastic. Uh, it just combos really well with both Evenly Matched and Twin Twisters, just to be massive tempo swing cards to try and draw one of them, and then let the rest of my deck do the work um, afterwards. But basically, uh, this deck is sort of like a skeletonized list of what I've been seeing people play. It most closely resembles the, uh, the First Place Las Vegas list uh, from, like, a week or so ago. Uh, the First Place Las Vegas Regional. Uh, but there's definitely some changes that I want to make to the deck that I've been, you know, coming into, that have been coming into my mind more and more as I've been testing the deck more and more, because I started playing this deck with literally no knowledge of how anything was meant to work, and I still have very limited knowledge, because I've only been playing it, like, I've done a lot of theory crafting with the deck in terms of thinking about it, because I know what the cards do, but in terms of actual technical play, I've only had about maybe two full days of, like, you know, off and on playing with this deck to, uh, to actually, you know, understand it, but... I really like it because it's a combo deck, searches a card that's like Soul Charge, just lets you extend resources into more things, you get actual advantage off of your resources with the Nightmare cards, and the fact that the deck can play so well off of two cards as a starting play that you actually get to play a lot of defensive cards in your deck. Like this deck is playing six hand traps and seven actual traps, and so these might be, you know, cut out, like, you know, marginally, like, uh, little by little for more combo cards, potentially, as things go down the line, like, maybe cutting some of these for the Armageddon Knights and the Maliciouses to play them alongside Junk Forward, Butter Spy, and, uh, the Gookie cards. It, it's all up in the air in terms of how I feel testing it, but I really, really like the fact that this is a combo deck that does have a lot of room to play these types of defensive, actual defensive cards in its main because of the fact that it's so good at actually making plays without uh, using like tons of resources. Like World Chalice, you can't play a trap lineup in your deck because every single card with like very, very little ex um, exception has to be like benefiting the combo or not. Like you can't get away with just like playing six hand traps and seven actual traps in World Chalice, along with other cards that don't really do anything for your deck, like uh, these cards that are bricks if you draw them. Like th These cards are definitely not combo pieces, and Ebly is not a combo starter. So this deck literally has like 13 cards in it that are not combo starters, but it still works because of how efficient it is at getting to literally 19 cards, of which, uh, 20 actually, of which you only have to draw two of them in conjunction with one another to actually make a play. The only play you can't do is if you draw two Butter Spies together, but even then you can make Isold and do some sort of play, but it's not going to be a good play. But like even two Junk Forwards is a play because of Invoker and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of different things that I like about this deck, but I'm not going to spend too much more time rambling about this, and I'm just going to jump straight into the gameplay because that is what you guys are ultimately watching this video for. At least I'd hope so. I mean, if you're here for my commentary and for my insight on certain things, then shit, that makes me feel a little bit better about my situation. But other than that, <laughs> that aside, let's jump straight into the first game, shall we? So going into the game, going into Rock, Paper, Scissors, just, just a little a little tiny interaction of Rock, Paper, Scissors where no one wins for a while, uh, but nothing too major. But I'm playing in Ranked on Dueling Book, as is my you know, preferred preference to do for these videos, and I lose Rock, Paper, Scissors and have to go second. My opponent starts with a pod duality and asks for a response, as if I'm going to Ash Blossom a duality. Nah, that's that's not good value. We don't take those. If it was Desires, yes, maybe. Uh, but my hand has a Ghost Ogre in it, which is, you know, not anything that can respond to any of that nonsense, and the rest of my hand is pretty garbage as well. Uh, now, my opponent here, as you can see in the chat, he added back Melusik and Strike to his hand, and then put just the uh, other card into his deck and shuffled, and just, I guess, didn't realize he was on six cards, so I had to call him out on that. 
But luckily, because Octo Stretch is a one, I can at least normal summon that and summon Link Rebo, and then I do have real trap cards at my disposal in my deck list, so I'm able to set those and, you know, sort of salvage the cold openings this deck has, although you could just play those trap cards as more combo cards, potentially, or more consistency cards, and you'd arguably have, you know, a better time, because then you'd be, you know, comboing, but... I digress. So, I link Karibo, who's Melo Seek attack, so that I don't take damage, so I don't lose cards. And then he summons a card and goes into Hextia. And I'm just like, I have to read all these cards, because I know what the Altergeist deck does, but by no means have I read any of the cards, because I'm not a huge fan of stun decks in general. Decks that have to win via, like, trap cards and not just, like, the pure essence of combo nature are decks that I tend to try and avoid. And so, I'm aware of what these cards are. But I've never read their specific wordings and what their actual effects are that are tied to which names and stuff like that. So I just have to read the cards. Uh, but so, this deck being a combo deck is something that I fancy a lot more because I'm capable of, you know, just playing through disruptions. And the fact that I had Judgment was great for the Imperial Order that was trying to come down on my Gookie rematch. But, so now there's a bit of a, a bit of a issue here that I just don't know how Multifigure works. Its wording is that it's a trigger effect that triggers on when you activate a trap card. So I thought it was just like... In reading it, just very quickly, I thought it was like the Paleos, which have to respond directly to trap activations in order to summon themselves. So I'm like, wouldn't Multivaker be on the field when you Torrentialed? Uh, but turns out that's not the case. He links me to a page. The page he linked me to was blank because there was like an error in the URL or some shit. Well, it took me to Yu-Gi-Oh! Wikia, but it took me to the old name card tip for the page. And so I had to go look the card up and read it, read the, read the stuff that says, yeah, this card can be used after trap effects resolve but so it's all fine so he torrentials gets his uh gets his multi-faker doesn't get a hextia search uh strangely enough like that card says when it's sent to the graveyard you search uh, an alter guy's card does it not or am i just mistaken but anyway i'm able to follow up with a soul charge most of my gooky effects are used but the soul charge you know cards that let you extend are what allow you to play through back row and in non-combo decks when you're playing against stun variant decks like you just you just do things where you just play cards that extend your combo sequence and eventually they will run out of trap cards or you will lose uh it's just basically the way that it goes but so he gets hextia back it dies because i uh, removed his uh protocol from the field so the hextia dies he gets a search for milliseek and I leave Octa Stretch on my field after making the Unicorn so that I can specifically tribute it in the start of his battle phase on his turn for my Link Karibo. That way I get a search off the Octa Stretch that has already sucked up its uh, search for the turn, if I remember correctly. And also, um, like, it just lets me put Link Karibo on the field during the battle phase after he controls a card so that he couldn't top deck something like Infinite Impermanence in order to out me because Infinite Impermanence requires you to have no cards on the field, in which case he'd have Metal Seek. So. Doing that, because I'm at 500 life from the Soul Charge, it was just very beneficial for me. So Link Karibo coming in clutch and just outright winning me the game there. Uh, because I had gotten the game down to a simplified game state, where I controlled more cards, I had Goki Rematch in hand, I had a lot of cards that were ready to be used next turn, but he did not. But so, going into the next game, he gets to go first again. Uh, he flips over Altergeist uh, Protocol, and uh, some other Altergeist trap that lets you put a card back into your deck and then add one. Uh, I don't know why he wouldn't have just put, uh, like, the one from Grave back, because I think it does that, reading it. Uh, but regardless, like, I open Soul Charge again. It's fucking amazing, right? Uh, just the ability to open Soul Charge is great, especially since this deck already has a themed Soul Charge that I can search. Um, which is why I did my plays in the order that I did them. Now, yes, the strike on the Isold would have been very, very, uh, problematic after he, uh, he used the Effect Negator on my Butter Spy, because I love the Butter Spy in this deck, that you can just mask Supress's effect with it. Uh, which is what I, like, love to do. <laughs> For some reason, I always draw that combination of cards together. Uh, but regardless, I had the Soul Charge, so I didn't search the rematch early, because I wanted to just be able to Soul Charge for four. I didn't want any other, like, nonsense happening. But, yes, the Soul Charge did allow me to do a lot more than what I'd be capable of doing through his Strike and all that sort of stuff, and his Silk Willidus, uh, that got summoned off Multifaker that he added to hand and all that. But, like, I still would have had rematch. If I didn't have Soul Charge, I would have searched rematch earlier, and it would have been live, and I still could have made plays that put my opponent in a simplified game state but because i had the soul charge into rematch into all these plays with phoenix blade being just absolutely free and all that sort of stuff then it just means that i'm able to out both the cards on his field establish a board that can't really be broken by anything that i know of that's in his hand because all he has in hand that i know of is multi faker and all that sort of stuff now this person i don't know how i feel about alter guys because this is like one of my first interactions with the deck and i haven't really been paying attention the other times that i interact with it because, like, I usually just like, eh, this deck is a stun deck, right? So it's probably not going to do much. 
But like, if this is what Alter Guys do going first consistently, I don't see this deck being that big of an, an issue, especially to the Gookie deck, because like this deck is such a good combo deck. Like that's what I actually really like about it. I've always been a really big fan of the Gookie cards, as I may have said, because like they search rematch, they are all floaters, they all have effects that aren't that great, but they actually facilitate you just doing good plays. But there was never any good Link monsters to go into them that were generic enough to be utilizable until we got access into the Nightmare cards, because now those cards actually turn your cards that are getting advantage into good things. Like, you could have done something post-Extreme Force with Izzold and done, like, Gookie decks that way. But basically, like, the Goki deck really got a final, like, finite win condition with the Nightmare cards. And ways to actually out cards on the field as well. Because you're just constantly recurring uh, the uh, Phoenix Blade for free off of cards that already searched cards. And then you're using those to discard to out spells and traps, out monsters, all that sort of stuff. So, like, it's, it's a really cool deck and I really enjoy playing it. I've been enjoying and playing it uh, a lot. Uh, I'm still not that amazing with it. There's still some combos that I'm trying to, like... It's re it's really weird. Like, the combos all have very, very easy starting points. You know, get to is old and then get to, like, three plus monsters on the field plus is old and then that starts your firewall phase. But at the point after your firewall phase, like, you'd think that it's easy, but based off what monsters and what cards are in your hand and stuff, it does change quite a bit, and then it also changes in response to trap card activations and stuff like that, but the deck definitely has a lot of really good things going for it, and I actually really like it, uh, so it's a deck that I will be experimenting more with in the future. Definitely uh, some changes to the extra deck that need to be made. I need to put in more of the Nightmare cards, essentially, because there were a lot of games that I have played with this deck where I ran out of Nightmare cards in my you know first play trying to break a board or something and then during the next turn I wanted those nightmare cards again like a second copy of Cerberus or a second copy of Phoenix uh, or a second copy of Unicorn like cards like that are cards that I really want to put into the deck list um, and just like make the deck a bit better like the deck the deck has definitely got some things that needs to be done to it to change it around, but basically I think this deck is really fun. I think this deck is something that I could see myself playing a lot of in the coming months, possibly, maybe going all the way into Nationals, uh, just because it's, it's a combo deck that does sort of exactly what World Chalice does in just as easy of a starting point but actually is just much better at grinding because all the effects are floaters. The deck has a searchable soul charge type card. Like that's, that's the biggest thing. Like I, I really like combo decks. I'm not really a huge fan of stun decks. I usually stay away from those, but combo decks I'm a big fan of. And now this deck is finally a full fledged combo deck with the release of the nightmare cards, because now the deck has something it can actually do with the advantage that you're yielding, and it makes the deck better at grinding, which it already was really good at. But anyway, as always, guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching. As usual, thanks for your time. Check out the links in the description to my Patreon and my Facebook fan page, as well as my Twitch page if you want to go follow those or help out to the channel through Patreon or whatever. I'd appreciate anything and everything. Um, go follow the Twitch page uh, that is linked in the description if you want to catch my live streams that happen at least once a week. Uh, sometimes it, you know, gets pushed back a little bit, but at least once a week I try to live stream. I'll probably start, like, ramping up that schedule in the coming weeks uh, to more times a week, but I digress. As I've already said, thanks for watching. Leave your comments and stuff and feedback in the comments down below as always. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.